It's time for Herd Mentality, the weekly episode where you control the discussion today on Locked On Bills. You are Locked On Bills, your daily Buffalo Bills podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Bills Mafia? It's Joe Marino, author of Go Bills and Buffalo's Run, also the co-host of the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast, and I'm your host of Locked On Bills. I want to thank you for making Locked On Bills your first listen every day, and a big welcome and shout out to our everydayers. You know who you are. Those of you who never miss a single episode, I appreciate y'all being here very, very much. I'd also like to invite you to subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, win or lose. Just visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. Well, folks, welcome in. Welcome to Draft Week. It's finally going to be here on Thursday. All the speculation will be over soon enough. We'll know exactly what the bills get done and Obviously, that's going to be a big part of this week and, of course, reacting to it next week. But today is Herd Mentality. I have some great questions lined up from you guys and our annual daddy-daughter mock draft duel. That's coming up later on. A lot of good stuff today. Let's get into it. First one is from James. James says, random Bill's take I want to throw your way. Feels like all of Bill's Twitter wants Baker or Leggett and McConkey as a double dip. So that's Javon Baker or Xavier Leggett and Led McConkey as receivers, as a wide receiver double dip. I have a feeling Bean is salivating over Jalen Polk and Malik Washington as a double dip. Just guys that feel more billsy. Perhaps a wide receiver double dip scenario from you would be interesting. All right, so yeah, I'm totally down with the wide receiver double dip. In fact, I think it should happen. You look at this Bills wide receiver core, and I think they're going to roster six when it's all said and done. You've got Khalil Shakir, Curtis Samuel, Mac Hollins, that's three. And then you have like Justin Shorter, KJ Hamler, Andy Isabella. You need to add two or three rosterable talents to this mix, including contributors. So I definitely think a wide receiver double dip is going to happen in this draft, and that makes a lot of sense. It's extremely deep with receiver prospects, guys that I like really throughout the first four or five rounds. And I think there's so many intriguing ways and combinations to get to the double dip. You could take a receiver at 28 and then another in the fourth round. You take one at 60 and one in the fifth round. Like I, There's so many different ways to do this. I like as piece one of the double dip, to get a size guy and then piece two to get somebody who's a little bit more like explosive yards after catch, maybe a field stretcher. So think of uh, of a double dip scenario like Xavier Leggett and Malik Washington. I'd love that. Or how about Brian Thomas and Javon Baker or Adonai Mitchell and uh, Malachi Corley, Ricky Parasol and Jowlin Polk. Like, just give me complimentary skill sets. Xavier Worthy, the speedster out of Texas, then come back with, I don't know, Javon Baker. There's so many ways to do this. And, like, I, there's so many outcomes with this that make sense to me, not only like with just the wide receiver discussion, but other players at other positions and how this draft can come out. I think there's so many people that have married themselves to the draft looking a certain way. Well, that's a surefire ticket to being disappointed. Open your minds. There's so many ways to get what this roster needs done in this draft and in the coming months. So, yeah, I'm I'm into the double dip, and I think there's a, du- a bunch of different combinations, but at the root of it, complementary skill sets, things that the Bills can add to this receiver core that doesn't already exist. That's kind of what I'm looking for in the double dip combinations. Richard says, is there one prospect that you absolutely hope the bills get? 
I know everyone has their preferences. I listen to every episode, and I can tell by your tone you prefer some guys over others. But I just want to know, is there one player in the current draft that you absolutely hope the Bills get? Let's eliminate any ridiculous trades. Is there a player, if the pick aligns with the talent, that you would absolutely hope we get? Well, asking me to pick one is difficult. I like so many players in this draft. So I'm going to give you a bunch of different options. How about edge rushers? I know that there's the the top four and there's kind of a drop off after the top four. But if you told me like in the fourth round or maybe even in the third, if the Bills somehow were to trade back and get a third round pick, Mo Kamara out of Colorado State or Austin Booker out of Kansas, I'd really like either of those picks. You talk about the need at safety. I'd love Cooper DeJean. I think in so many ways, he is the perfect defensive back for this team to add. And if he got to 28, I'd love that selection. Also at safety, Dadrian Taylor Demerson, I think is exactly the deep ball defender that this secondary would love to have. Kind of open up some of their coverage options. Mid-round centers. Bo Limmer out of Arkansas, Tanner Bordellini out of Wisconsin. I think those would be nice depth players and kind of a hedge against Connor McGovern transitioning. And then, you know, if you thought you had a hard time maybe getting a left guard, you move Connor McGovern back. You feel like maybe one of those two guys has starter ability in time. At wide receiver, you know, I love Xavier Leggett, and I think he's the the three level threat yards after catch deep threat combination player that makes so much sense for this offense. Devontae Walker out of North Carolina as a field stretcher in the middle rounds makes sense to me. There's some defensive tackles I'd love on day two, like Chris Jenkins out of Michigan and Michael Hall out of Ohio State. So many different players that I would love, um, and those are some just kind of random fits that I think would really improve this roster. Anthony says, if Cooper DeGene is the pick at 28, Will he finally fill the Buffalo, the Buffalo, the Buffalo nickel role with his versatility? I think he would be a great fit for this defense. I know most fans would go nuts if we don't draft the wide receiver in round one, but I think I'm okay with waiting and getting someone on day two. Thanks for being the most rational and realistic Bills content guy out there. Yeah, listen, I I think Cooper DeGene would be a, an incredible pick at 28 overall. I have concerns about him getting past Philly at 22. Then you have Tampa and Green Bay also in the mid-20s before the Bills pick. So if he gets to 28, you'd probably have a hard time convincing me he's not the best player on the board, like the clear-cut best player on the board. I'd rather have him than the fifth or sixth receiver in the draft, to be honest with you, especially when I don't think there's a whole lot that separates that caliber of prospect to what you can get at 60. I think Cooper DeGene would be a slam-dunk first-round pick. I don't know that he would exactly fill the Buffalo nickel role. I think that you would want to work him in at safety. I think that's where where you really tap into that versatility where I think he can do so many things. I think he can serve as a third safety. Um but I'm not I'm not really wanting to invent a role for him when you just extended Taron Johnson and made him the highest paid slot receiver in the league. I think Cooper DeGene comes into your defensive backfield as your immediate safety three. I think you are you become more versatile with your back seven alignments and certainly would be a player that I would tab as one of my long-term starters at safety and then kind of figure out between Taylor Rapp and Mike Edwards which guy you want to be his running mate. And, you know, I know Taylor Rapp signed a three-year deal, Mike Edwards a one-year deal, but that wrap extension really is something the Bills can get out of after one season. And, you know, I think maybe Cooper DeGene and Mike Edwards be a, would be a more complimentary pair. But DeGene is such a do-everything player. Size, athleticism, coverage instincts, tackling ability, physicality, unbelievable ball skills. He can help you as a returner. I think he'd be an awesome addition to this football team. And you'd get zero complaints from me if he was our selection ultimately at pick number 28. All right, folks, we got plenty of more to get to in this next segment, including some thoughts on drafting offensive line, talent cliffs, draft boards, all of that. So be sure to stick with me. It's playoff time in the NBA and the NHL. Baseball is in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every single game. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets 
That's guaranteed. That's 150 bucks, win or lose. You can bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. So what are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. I've been told that I'm a competitive person. You think that's true? Well, of course it is. We all have a competitive side, and my competitive side is a big fan of Monopoly Go. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's been downloaded over 150 million times, and it's a great twist on Monopoly where you play on not one but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations building up amazing cities that bring you big money. But the best part is messing with my friends. I can charge them rent on my iconic properties just like classic Monopoly, but now I can also rob their vaults of riches for myself. And the leaderboards show me who the biggest Monopoly tycoon is. But it's not just my competitive side that loves it. You can team up with friends and people from all around the world in time tournaments and earn huge rewards. So get in the game and join your friends. Download Monopoly Go for free on the App Store or Google Play. All right, folks, next up here comes from Andrew, who says, I think Buffalo should prioritize offensive line in the first round. Provided the board falls favorably, it seems increasingly unlikely he'll be there, but I'd love Graham Barton out of Duke if he's there at 28. Bill's Twitter would absolutely melt down, but I would rather have a dominant offensive line than the fifth best wide receiver in the first round. Kansas City's success in the playoffs is partly due to defenses being wholly unable to affect Patrick Mahomes. That's the one variable that we have the most control over attempting to replicate. I do not entertain possibilities of a massive trade-up. We have far too many holes to fill elsewhere to be selling off premium draft picks. Joe Biscalia, I love him. He's driving me insane trying to imagine ways to trade up into the top 10 this year. I believe Buffalo would be best served getting multiple good receivers or players rather than spending excess capital trying to get a single great one. I'm squarely on team trade down almost always. This team would be well served trying to absolutely eat on day two of this year's draft. What would your thoughts be if Bean followed a path similar to what I laid out? I would be really happy. Um, I think there's a couple of offensive linemen that I'd like in the first round. I think the interior is where that conversation makes the most sense. You know, Graham Barton, a player that I do have kind of graded in that late first round area, uh, transitioning over from kind of being a college left tackle to playing center. Um, really likable football player, really strong upper body, good athlete, can get out in space. You know, I think that tackle background is going to serve him well on the interior. He's a good football player. Um, there's a, a Zach Frazier out of West Virginia. I think he'd be an awesome starter at center. You keep Connor McGovern at left guard. There's some tackles that I think are really, really, really good prospects. I'm not sure they get to the Bills at 28. I'm not sure that a tackle makes sense for the Bills at 28 if you ex you plan on extending Spencer Brown. But yeah, I, I'm never going to be disappointed with a premium investment and an offensive lineman. I mean, it's critical. Jo you have Josh Allen. Don't you want to give him every opportunity to be successful? You know what's more important than wide receivers? Offensive line. You want to throw the ball to wide receivers? Well, it starts with protection. You want to be able to run the football, it starts with being able to open holes up front. It matters. I mean, I thought the biggest, one of the biggest differences in the Super Bowl game between the Kansas City Chiefs and the San Francisco 49ers, of course, the quarterback position, of course, Andy Reid versus Kyle Shanahan. Like, I get the advantages there. But to me, it was in the trenches. That San Francisco offensive line, which has Trent Williams, who's you know, one of the best three offensive linemen in the game. And then it's like four guys that I think are just guys, like just as average as they come, not super talented, like get by offensive linemen. And I thought the Kansas City Chiefs defensive line was able to beat them up. And even Trent Williams had a horrible game in the Super Bowl. I thought that was such a big difference. Meanwhile, Kansas City has that interior three of Trey Smith, Creed Humphrey, and Joe Tooney that absolutely handled what San Francisco had. Think about the game against the Bills. The Bills' defensive line impact was missing. Why? Because Kansas City's offensive line is really good, and then, of course, they did a great job of incorporating tight ends to help where their tackles were kind of weak. 
So, yeah, it, I think football is still one in the trenches. I know that fantasy football is all the rage, and that's where the attention is. But if you want fantasy football production, you got to have offensive line play. So, yeah, I'm into it for sure. And I love the idea of trading back. I think you have been very intentional about positioning yourself as a roster for this mini reset. You got younger. And it's all about ushering in this next chapter of the Josh Allen era. Well, the best way for you to find meaningful talent to maximize the next chapter of the Josh Allen era is to have lots of draft picks. You can't be just giving up everything you have to go up and get one guy in the top 10. For a receiver? Every year you have deep, talented receiver drafts. Every year you see productive receivers drafted outside of the first round. Like, what are you talking about? It doesn't even make sense to me. Let's build up the most complete roster around Josh Allen and hope that this next chapter can be even better than the one that was just written. So, yeah, give me all the darts to throw at the board. I love some of the research that's come out this year, whether it's been YouTube videos, studies, articles that have been written about you know, this colossal mistake that teams continue to make in the draft, and it's believing that they they can go get their guys that they love and everything else will fall into place. Like, no, man, it's it's very hard to draft. It's very hard to be consistent drafting. Give yourself as many opportunities to be right about draft picks, and that comes in the form of having lots of draft picks. You're going to go give up a multiple ones, multiple twos to go get some receiver in the top 10? It's hard for me to, to understand that as the best plan for this football team. So, yeah, like I'm totally open to so many different scenarios in this draft. And one of them would be include, would include an offensive lineman in the first round. One of them would include a trade back into the second round and just stockpiling day two draft capital and giving yourself a bunch of opportunities. Some of these, look at these day two picks the Bills have made recently. Osiris Torrance, Terrell Bernard. Like, yeah, give James Cook. I think we're past the disappointments of Cody Ford and Boogie Basham and A.J. Epinesa, and now we're excited about the development of a Spencer Brown and a Terrell Bernard and a James Cook and an Osiris Torrance. Think about some of those day three hits, like Khalil Shakir, like Christian Benford. Of course, Matt Milano. Like, yeah, give me all the darts. I want to get more of those guys. I want to uncover more of those guys. So, yeah, I'm team trade down. I'm almost always team trade down. Next question here comes from Amy. Amy says, my question for her mentality is that I've heard the, the term horizontal board in regards to the draft. Could you please explain it? Well, I can tell you that in our next conversation, or in one of our next two conversations, I am going to do our draft board reveal. So I've been working extremely hard on evaluating this draft class. I'm going to have around 150 players graded and I'm going to deliver my Buffalo bill specific draft board. And it'll be a document that anybody can have. I'll, you'll get more details about that in that conversation, but you're going to get a horizontal board from me and a vertical board. And the vertical board is interesting. It's my players in order of how they're graded. It's just a list though, right? It's just literally a list of players. It, to me, the horizontal board just provides so much more value visually to understand the draft, to understand where the talent cliffs are, and we'll work through it. So you'll see a horizontal board, but again, vertical board, just a list of players in order of how you have them graded. Horizontal board kind of lays it out and shows you, all right, these are the players in these tiers that make the most sense, right? So you would look and see, these are my first round receivers, second round, third round, fourth round, fifth round receivers. And it's all lumped together, but it's horizontal. So then it's the that it's that position group and that tier next to all of the other position groups in their tiers. Again, you're going to see my horizontal board in the next 36 hours or so on this podcast. So uh, stay tuned for that. But again, I think the biggest thing is vertical is just a list. It's a list of players. Horizontal provides a visual element that I think really speaks to understanding talent cliffs, where the value is going to be found, where the draft is rich with talent, where it's not. And I think all of that helps inform your decisions or it should help inform your decisions. So you have that coming up here uh, very soon. So good question. And we're going to get real acquainted with a horizontal board 
in uh, in the next conversation or so that we have on this podcast. DK says the top needs seem to be wide receiver and defensive end, but of the following positions, which position the fo- excuse me, but of the following positions, which positions are you most comfortable waiting for on day three? Defensive tackle, running back, and interior offensive line. Safety seems relatively safe to wait on, so I left it out. Well, again, I think the board reveal that I I do will showcase those talent cliffs, and I think that will inform the decisions. I do think that running back and interior offensive line are positions that you can wait for on day three, with some exceptions with the interior offensive line that I'd be comfortable with uh, at 28 or 60, to be honest with you. But I think you could probably wait there. I think there's a very, very steep talent cliff on uh, when it comes to the defensive end position after the top four. I think safety is strong rounds two through four. And I think wide receiver has answers through the first four rounds. But um, even with defensive tackle, I, I don't know that I'd love waiting till day three. I think if you want a meaningful answer there, uh, you better do it pretty early in the draft. Uh, I think the drop off there is pretty significant. So if you gave three positions, defensive tackle, running back, interior offensive line, I'd be most comfortable waiting for sure running back, then interior offensive line, then defensive tackle when it comes to those specific positions of need. All right, folks, on the other side of it, we're getting to the dad-daughter draft duel. You know, did the Bills do wrong by Von Miller? All of that's coming up here in just a moment, so be sure to stick with me. You shouldn't have to worry when you're looking to buy tickets for your next big event. Well, you don't have to because game time is here. And it's the best way, it's the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. They specialize in last-minute tickets, which I love. We are now a family of four, and my wife and I, we love to go to concerts. And it's hard for me to know right now if on June 29th I'm going to be available to go to a concert. Well, that's what I love about the Game Time app is you know we can find out closer to the events if we can go or not. And, uh, you know, they specialize in the last minute tickets. So, you know, that can help us with our inability to, uh, you know, say for sure if we're going to be flexible or free on a specific day, two, three months from now when the concert actually is. I love the app for game time. It's awesome. It's easy to navigate. They give you flash deals. And I also love this when you buy a ticket from game time, it sends the ticket straight to your phone. So you don't have to dig through emails to find it. So ta- uh, take this, the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time, download the game time app, create an account and use code locked on NFL for $20 off your first purchase terms apply again, create an account and redeem code locked on NFL. That's L O C K E D O N N F L for $20 off download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, folks, it's time for one of my favorite traditions on this podcast. Um, It's funny how certain things just have stuck year over year on this podcast. And one of them is our dad-daughter draft duel, courtesy of Drew and Lexi. So here it is. Drew writes... Here it is, the fourth annual dad-daughter draft duel. In this tradition, my daughter Lexi, now in sixth grade, and I both prepare mock drafts, and you evaluate to see which would be better for the Bills. So far, you have preferred my draft twice and Lexi's once. Given that I am an everydayer and Lexi is a recent elementary school graduate, I feel like I should be doing better. As per your request this year, I'm sending you the drafts anonymously and I'll let you know which is which after you have rendered your decision. In our drafts, trades are encouraged, but you can involve only this year's draft picks. Here are the results. So I have draft one. I have draft two. I'm going to pick one. Drew's going to let me know uh, which one I pick in terms of if it's him or or Lexi, and then I'll share with you um, in our next conversation which, uh, which one I pick. So we can either have the all-time series tied at two or dad can pull away here going up three to one. All right. So draft one is a trade back scenario. And in this scenario, the bills get at pick 36 and it's Rakestraw cornerback from Missouri at 48. They get Xavier Leggett wide receiver, South Carolina at 78. The bills get Javon Bullard safety from Georgia 
128, Marshawn Lloyd, running back, USC. 133, Muhammad Kamara, edge, Colorado State. 139, Isaiah Adams, interior offensive lineman from Illinois. 160, Jared Wiley, tight end, TCU. 163, Jamari Thrash, wide receiver out of Louisville. And then at 248, Evan Williams, safety out of Oregon. Good-looking draft, right? I like that a lot. The next one's also very good. So in, in draft two, the Bills get Chop Robinson at 28, edge rusher out of Penn State. 60, they get Ricky Parasol, the wide receiver out of Florida. 128, Zach Zinter, interior offensive lineman out of Michigan. 133, Marshawn Lloyd, running back USC. 144, Malik Mustafa, the safety from Wake Forest. 160, Jarvis Brownlee, the corner out of Louisville. 163, Jalex Hunt, edge rusher, Houston Baptist. Pick 200, Tyler Davis, defensive tackle, Clemson. 204, Marist Lufau, the linebacker from Notre Dame. And then a pick 248, Bub Means, wide receiver, Pittsburgh. I'll start by saying this. I really do like both drafts, and I would be happy with either. Like, I would literally take either one of these drafts. So both of you did very well. This is not like an easy decision by any means. For draft number one, I love the trade back. I love being able to get Xavier Leggett. I think everybody knows that. I really do like Javon Bullard. He's my number two safety in this class after Cooper DeGene. So to get him at pick 78 is awesome. And then there are some really good middle round picks like Muhammad Kamara is an edge rusher. I really like Isaiah Adams is an offensive lineman. I really like Jamari Thrash and Jared Wiley. Those are great values in the one sixties. I think there's a path for both to be really good pros. You know, even though I don't necessarily look at tight end as a, a as a need at all for the bills at one sixty, Jared Wiley's probably the best player on the board. I think that's a really good job. Now I would love this mock draft even more. If Rake Straw wasn't picked at 36, I like Rake Straw. Um, I think he's probably I think he's my sixth rated corner in this draft. I don't think it's a terrible value at 36. I just kind of wonder, you know, if that wasn't the first pick, how the dominoes fall. I think you, you could tell you probably wanted to get a corner, and I get it. Like Rasul Douglas probably contract year. You still don't really know what you have in Kyer Elam. I love Christian Benford, but he's only one guy. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm into the idea of a corner. There's a lot of corners I like. Um, so there's, there's plenty to love about, of mock draft. Number one for mock draft. Number two, I really love the top two picks of chop Robinson and Ricky Parasol. And then there's some really nice values. Malik Mustafa at 144 is awesome. Jarvis Brownlee out of Louisville press man coverage. I mean, he's awesome at that. I'm a big fan. Um, and I, I think I would like date the the draft two a little bit more if some of the later picks uh look differently i'm i'm lower on jalex hunt i'm lower on tyler davis um i like bub memes at 248 so it, it, i i think i'm just a little bit more lukewarm on the day two picks or excuse me the day three picks for draft number two so my official choice here is draft number one i i love the top but i think the depth of the hall just excites me a little bit more especially some of those day three selections. So draft one, no idea if that's Drew or Lexi. We'll find out when Drew follows up with me. Um, but if you're on YouTube, why don't you leave a comment? Uh, let us know who you uh, pick for the dad-daughter draft duel, and then I'll let you know who the winner is once Drew follows up with me. Next one here comes from Jeff, who says, did the Bills do wrong by Von Miller with the Stefan Diggs trade? At age 35, Von took a pay cut when he was under no obligation to do so. Then the team used that cap space to take on a $31 million dead cap hit in 2024, which at least in the short term has only made the team worse. We don't know what the conversations were like between Bean and Von Miller, but I can only assume that Von agreed to a team-friendly restructure of his contract in order to help the team get better right now. All right, so I think this is a fair question, but I do want to, I guess, clarify is the word I'm looking for. The Bills did take on a $31 million dead cap hit for trading away Stephon Diggs. But he was already counting $29 million. Like, no matter what, he was going to count against your cap. If you kept him, it'd be $29 million. If you didn't, it'd be $31 million. The difference is now you have a second-round pick. 
in exchange for Stefan Diggs. And I, I don't, I do, I've said this multiple times. I don't think that part of the offseason blueprint for Brandon Bean was trading away Stefan Diggs. I don't think that was part of his plan. Maybe he was open to it, but I think some of the decisions might have been different if that was what they wanted to do. And so I think that's an important layer to this conversation. Also, I wonder how much of what Von Miller did was just about like his trajectory as a player and, and his desire to be a general manager. I think that's probably a great story for him to tell as a GM one day that, look, when I was 34 and I had made all my money and I had injured my, I got suffered an injury and I wanted to kind of do right by the team because I believed in it. I put myself in a position where I took this pay cut, right? That's like a, a feather in his cap that he can say to players down the road. Yeah, I did this right or wrong. Like that's definitely something he could talk about, but the root of this question, you're, you were paying, you were committing $29 million in cap space to Stefan Diggs, no matter what this season. Now it's 31 million and you get a second round pick. It's not like, it's not like it was the 29 million and then another 31 on top of that. You have a $3 million or a $2 million more cap hit. You don't get Stefan Diggs, but you do get a 2025 second round pick. That's how I look at it. Slip and Rip says some of us daily drive to work listeners. Some of us are daily drive to work listeners and your voice is part of our routines. That being said, the lady that does the lockdown intros and promos, can you let can you let us know who she is and if you've ever actually met or talked to her? I'd like to thank her on behalf of the rest of the mafia and listeners. Maybe a shout out to her. So first of all, shout out to that lady. I don't know who that is. Um, <laughs> they, she does a great job. Uh, does all the lockdown promo stuff. Um, I'll find out who it is. Um, Part of my role with Locked On and the, and the network um, is all of that creative stuff. All of that's t- that they handle all of that. My job is just to do the content, right? Come up with the show concepts, do the shows, and then all of those other elements are kind of done for me. I will say this: uh, prepare yourself because a new intro is coming at some point. Uh, they actually made the first draft of it, and I pushed back. I didn't like it, uh, so. <laughs> So we're redoing that a little bit so that it, it fits more with um, kind of the dynamics of the show that I, I want to be certain. But um, I, it is her voice, though. That voice continues. Um, the music will be a little bit different. Still high energy, but we got to make a few tweaks before I, I get it here. So thank you to the everydayers who these these things are all part of what you do every day. And I appreciate you including us in your routine. And I know that whether it's my comments, that voice, the intro song, those are staples of your daily routine. And that means a lot to me. Um, so to kind of close the the loop on this conversation for this question, I don't know who it is, but I'll find out. I appreciate your fitting us into the routine and then also prepare yourself because it's going to be a little bit different at some point whenever they get me an intro that I actually like. So Stay tuned on that. All right, folks, that's going to do it for us here today on this episode. Uh, Things that you can count on this week, our draft board reveal. We're going to do an episode on pre-draft visitors. I want to give you my final thoughts entering the draft. We'll have reactionary pods uh, after the first round, after day two. And then I want to do pods on every pick for day three. So kind of like shorter pods that kind of cover each of the picks. And then next week is all big picture conversations about the draft class. So tons of coverage, as you know, on this podcast. Don't miss anything. Make sure that you're subscribed. We'd love it if you took a second to rate, review, and share the podcast. Have a great rest of your day. Go Bills. And I look forward to catching up with you again real soon.